Thank you, Jesse. Uh, I'm Valentino Marano. I'm 27, a uh, data engineer from Tribe Data Management uh, in Italy. And uh, as Jesse said, I just took last month my second level degree in computer science. I've been working for about five years in an Oracle partner firm. And uh, I, last year I joined uh, ING, and now I'm working on Data Lake. I love the technology, obviously, uh, theoretic computer science, but also listening to music, photography, and animals. And today I'm very proud to present you Alfred, a product built from scratch by a few chapters engineer in, in our tribe, Data Management Italy. We will have a presentation more focused on the engineered approach that gave birth to Alfred. First of all, we will see the main problems and needs that we had to satisfy. Then we will introduce some concepts about uh, Alfred and some features. Alfred, after that, we will have an overview of Alfred's role in a data lake environment. So we will see a sort of overview of uh, the architecture. And uh, at the end, we will explain some benefits. And we will wrap up all the features and uh, benefits we had and time saving. We will start uh, our story with a fam famous quote. For those who haven't seen it, it's uh, just Star Wars. So ATLs are typical processes to load data in a data warehouse or data lake environment. And one of the most complex aspects uh, beside the effective single process is the, is the synchronization and management of all loadings, because usually ATL tools like uh, Data Stage allow to compose more developments and main processes in a bigger one, but unlikely they will manage the right synchronization, balancing, and checks to decide whether a process can be started or not. For example, we may want to start a process that reads some data after that the process that loads those data has been completed correctly. Or maybe we just want to serialize accesses to some resources without specifying which process must be the first one and which process must be the second one. Usually, the teams must face those kind of problems and spend much time by taking away from really valuable ETL activities. So if I have to code all the synchronization and uh, process management, I cannot take the right time for performance tuning or maybe to design the code in the right way. We all know that teams are always in a hurry to manage all new developments, reworks, and in this way you can save pressure time. On the other hand, maintenance team needs to a tool to easily monitor, prioritize and interact with the loading flows even without being expert of uh, ETL tools, as usually happens. Moreover, maintenance team usually notices that machine is executing too many processes at some times and too few processes in other times. In this way, we can just try to have better balancing. We decided to put all this standard stuff and general needs we had in an abstraction layer, Alfred. In this way, developers can focus on their main ATL activity and create units of work in an atomic way. And Alfred will take care and orchestrate processes, execute them in the right moment, basing on priority, constraints, and rules defined by the user. Moreover, it will also take care of standard processes we need by offering specific models, for example, for environment, environment maintenance, statistic gathering, data quality, etc. Alfred is mainly based on database configuration. In this way, any user can change its behavior or reorganize all processes without coding. And usually, ATL tools can be used to build a bigger process by coding and putting many single processes together. But uh, this will, would require some 
could to modify the organization. Alfred allows to go beyond that monolithic approach. And in other cases, maybe dev team has to code custom semaphores or synchronization among processes. All the time spent in this kind of activities can be saved and in invested in really valuable activities. Alfred orchestrates processes basing on structure and rules defined in its own repository. Let's see some definition before moving on. So we have a queue definition. A queue is just a composition of nodes and tasks organized in a graph way. So it's a sort of graph. For example, in this structure, we can see that uh, uh, Alfred will execute the first task. And after that, we, he will run uh, its three children in parallel, if possible. After the first task, he uh, can uh, start its unique child. And for example, this one, this task can be started just when both its parent have been completed correctly. So far we talked about task. What is a task? Task for Alfred, it's a, unique, a unit of work developed by a single atomic process. He knows that uh, he will start that task, it will execute for a while, and at the end, he will uh, complete correctly all with some errors. A task, it's just a, an abstract container that can be a data state sequence, a job, a Python script, and so on. Anything that can be run by Alfred. A node is a special task that uh, allows us to ease queue dependencies definition. As a matter of fact, if we want to define dependencies between those four fathers, and these three children, without a node in the middle, we would uh, have to define Cartesian dependencies between each father and each child. Using a node in the middle, we can reduce the number of requested dependencies to have this graph structure. In this slide, we sum up some of the main features Alfred can start processes when triggered by file arrival or other events, scheduled by a specific frequency, or simply invoked by a manual intervention for, for maintenance team. Alfred can also execute different types of tasks, and uh, if a task ends in error, he will automatically restart the task uh, if needed, or if the user has defined it. In this way, we can uh, be sure that uh, in some cases uh, the start the task will execute it, will be executed correctly if the problem is just uh, uh, an infrastructure problem. It can run different kinds of tasks that uh, can be run from native technology. Alfred also takes care of the execution, so he will decide which process must be started in the, any moment, basing on dependencies defined by the user basing on constant, but also basing on priorities. In this way, you will avoid to overload the machine by limiting the number of current parallel processes and will try to balance all the processes through the whole day, let's say. He offers also some database reports to help maintenance team to be aware of current status of all loadings and they send periodic reports with performance statistics and variety of automatic emails notification. We can also ask Alfred to send emails to different group of people for different events. It's just some configuration. For example, for example we may want to send uh, a maintenance team email if the queue cannot be started because of some constraint. But uh, for the same queue, we want to send uh, uh, a different kind of with a business team when the queue will be completed correctly. Moreover, Alfred email utility can be used in custom processes to send emails with attachments with all the benefits of an abstraction layer. 
We can change addresses, we can change the server SMTP to send emails without coding, but just with easy configurations. Here we can see the architecture of the environment. On the left side, there are the source systems, local and global. In the middle, there is all the Lata Lake environment with the different layers and Alfred repository lives uh, on this environment. And uh, on the right hand, we can see all the outputs generated from the data lake. So data reports, uh, analysis, local and global consumption, and everything else. In this way, Alfred manages all processes running on data lake, the loading of data produced by source systems, the transformation of data in intermediate layers till the data merge fill up, and also the production of uh, the outputs uh, for other environments, non-data lake, for example, the data consumption uh, or uh, data reports, uh, etc. This is a solution that organizes end-to-end -end all the environment loadings. In this slide, we put all the benefits and advantages for both dev and maintenance team exposed so far. So first of all, dev team must not worry about coding or managing process orchestration. This part is completely abstracted by Alfred with a sort of a black box approach. The queue structure can be modified very easily because it's just a configuration, so we don't need to code. And it's also possible, for example, to duplicate a queue and simulate test cases. Without Alfred, we had to duplicate the coded main object, let's say, modify it and test it. And at the end, we had to remove it from all environments. Managing as a configuration can be much more easier and flexible. In this way, all time saved but from coding uh, can be used for performance tuning and other uh, variable activities. Moreover, all Alfred configuration can be easily automated. For example, for almost all standard layers, we prepare the utilities in order to automatically generate configuration with minimal inputs. In this way, all Alfred configuration will be almost free, let's say. On the other end, we have the maintenance team that has a central cockpit to monitor all flows and will be automatically warned about failures or other problems. Moreover, Alfred will be uh, identifying performance leaks and degradation and will send reports about that. In this way, maintenance team can execute deeper analysis and uh, reorganize processes or the right time to execute a process in order to maximize performances and machine usage. So we will not uh, have uh, uh, death times and uh, too heavy times. And uh, in this way, those reports have also different level of details. Some are very technical, for example, for maintenance team or engineer teams, while other reports are more general with an overview and that can be also sent to managers or business people that are not interested in too many details, but just want to know the right status as an overview. Moreover, the process execution follows a specific algorithm to prioritize more important processes and avoid machine learning, machine overloading. In this way, we can push, let's say, the machine to the maximum level of usage without overloading it and without wasting time. In conclusion, Alfred gives uh, many features to the whole pipeline, but, but can also be extended based on our needs because it's a custom product, so we built it from scratch and uh, everything that we need can be added as a new feature on Alfred. We are using it to manage all our data lake processes in, uh, in our environment, and we keep adding more and uh, more features and improvements uh, since uh, its first release. 
Alfred is built with native technology and designed with an engineered approach using available tools on data lake environments. So we are not using third party tools or other stuff. And it's designed by people who cover of data. This is the most important thing. So there are almost no limits of what we can do and what we can build. Before leaving the microphone to Jesse, I would uh, really like to thank our chapter leads, Daniele Schiavelli and Luca Scovotto, our IT area lead, uh, Fabio Montoli, our tribe lead, Viviana Nasso, and last but not the least, all the engineers from uh, Italian Data Management Chapter. And thanks for your attention. Thank you, Valentino. That was a nice presentation. Uh, we have some questions uh, from the audience. Uh, Bharat Deep asks, how do you ensure optimized resource utilization across multiple parallel tasks? Because the management of current parallel tasks is managed by Alfred, so he knows how many tasks are running, uh, how heavy are the different tasks, and we can set different levels of parallelism to avoid uh, to overload the machine. So uh, it can be scaled based on the powerful of the, the machine, based on the power of the database, uh, and can be used as a solution to manage different environments with different counts of uh, processes, let's say. Okay, uh, so maybe I will ask a follow-up question. So does it uh, anticipate the volume of the data and adjust accordingly, or does it uh, work based on the, the, the number of resources that are being used or the, um, uh, the resource usage? Sorry? Uh, so the, can it adjust to the, to the volume that is being processed, the amount of data that is being processed, and depending on the, the, the steps in the ETL process, or does it work based on the resources that are being used, the, the resource usage uh, of, of the cluster? It's uh, based on the processes that are running. So we, um, the code should be designed to uh, fit the to have the maximum benefit. So it must be a sort of atomic process. In this way, the more atomic the process is, the, more, the best effort Alfred can give and the best benefit we can have from using Alfred. In this way, we have the, um, the best product, let's say, to uh, brought to the end of the, the pipeline. Okay. Uh, then we have another question from Dennis. Uh, what is or are the interfaces of Alfred? Uh, is this kind of serverless computing service? Uh, let's say that uh, at the moment we are evaluating a uh, sort of uh, uh, interface for Alfred. So uh, that will not be in this way users will need to just uh, in a sort of analysis phase. And at the moment, uh, Alfred has a proper interface, so we can, we can uh, interact with Alfred based on the native uh, technology of uh, that take. OK. Uh, and maybe if we want more details, maybe we, we can also schedule a specific session to uh, deep dive the, the topic. Yeah, I think that that is uh, the follow-up question from Dennis saying, where can he find, uh, you know, technical documentation, quick start guide, etc., for Alfred, right? So Dennis, please uh, contact uh, Valentino and, and plan a session. Uh, so that that will help. Yeah, sure. Thanks for for the the questions. Yeah. Any other questions from anyone? Okay, uh, maybe not now. Then please, please contact Valentino uh, if you have or if you think of some questions later on. Uh, thank you very much, Valentino. It was a nice presentation. Uh, thank you. I, yeah.